Okay, Bezra Hashem. Today's daf is daf Lamed Vav. And we're going to begin from daf Lamed Dalet Ahmed Bez. It's new Gemara. It's a uh, very straightforward Gemara uh, along the lines of what we've been learning. So we're starting from daf Lamed Hey Ahmed Bez, about six lines from the bottom. Tana Rabbanim, the rabbis taught. We're talking about, of course, if someone rapes or is ma'anis or seduces a young girl 12 years old. And the Torah says that you pay 50 shekel for that. And you have to marry her. So the Gemara says, the Brisa says, Aroyos, if it turns out to be, let's say, somebody who you can't marry, like your sister. Like in our mission, it says you pay. But in this Brisa, it disagrees with that. Aroyos, if you seduced or ma'anis your arayas, ushnius, or thing, or, or what we don't know what shnius is, but we'll say it means somebody who's also to you midrabonan to marry. La'arayas, right? Ain lehem loy kanas v'loy pitui. There is no fine or if for raping them or or if you seduce them, the, obviously, because the Torah hinges, according to this b'risa, the Torah hinges the paying of the fine with the ability to marry. And if it's a type of girl that you can never make her as your wife because she's usher to you, therefore there is no fine. Then the b'risa says, hamamo enes, somebody who... Um, uh, ab- absolves a marriage. Now, how could a girl absolve a marriage? We've learned this many times. When her brother a mother married her off as a, you know, let's say a seven-year-old girl, she was married off. Now, she absolved the marriage. She says, I don't like my husband. And she doesn't even need a get, right? But the fact that she was married, we assume that she's not a basula anymore. She's not a virgin. And therefore, the Baraisa says, Ain lo lo knas, lo That's not in the subject of knas, of einis, and mafata. It has to be a basula. Another case, islandess. Islandess, we saw what this word means. This word means there's a girl who, who is never gets to puberty. She can remain like a, a minor up until 20 years old, and then she turns into a goddle. She never has that stage of nara like teenager, a 12-year-old, because she's not showing signs of being a a mature woman. And therefore, she's just like, she'll forever remain a young girl, like a cotton. She has no knas and the loipito. There's no din of oinis and there's no din of seduction. So there's no money here. And somebody who's divorced because... Because of uh, her husband found her that she 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 was mazana, again she's a baula. So if somebody else rapes her. There's no knas and leipitoi. Hi Lewis, with two lines on daf lamed lamed hey amid beis on the bottom. So Bernard, we, I, yeah, can I just, sure. This doesn't seem, seem counterintuitive. I've been learning this for a couple of couple of days. That to me, if no one explains it to me. And I would have to assume something. I would think that if you can't marry the person that you manish, if you can't marry her, you would then go ahead and pay a fine. But if you can marry her, the fine is you got to go marry her. But right. It's the, it's the opposite. It's the opposite of what you think. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I could only answer that question by saying that first, first of all, things that are in the Torah is very difficult to understand. A lot of things that you read that you think are, you know, are right. Uh, uh, what the Torah says should be is is very hard to grasp. I can only say that if you raped a stranger, right? So it means you were more aggressive to that. When it comes to Arias, usually these Arias are hanging around you. So mm-hmm. it's almost like the Yetzahara pushed you into doing it. So we mm-hmm. absolve you into into in, of the knas. That's my. I, thing. I but, see. Uh, it's I, so it might be it might be nonsense, but it's a good point. I mean, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So the Gemara says, "My arayas, my shnias arayas." What does it mean that you don't have to pay knas if you have uh, you rape your arayas or a shnias arayas? Elema arayas. What does Arias mean? We go to Daf, Lamed Baba, and Aleph. Arias Mamish, like your sister. You raped your sister. You don't have to pay your father the knas. So that's the Brisa. Shnias, what does a Shnias mean? Shnias will mean somebody who's also Midrabonim. Who could be also Midrabonim to you? Your great granddaughter. Midaraisa, you potentially could marry your great granddaughter, right? You should all have great granddaughters. But 
but if, if a person raped his great granddaughter, the Bryce says, uh, uh, that's only Asad Rabbanim. The Bryce says there is no Knas. So the Gemara right away jumps on that. Wait a second. Kevin de Midaraisa Chazile, Minatori, you're permitted to marry your great granddaughter. So am I a Lehen Knas? Why is there no fine? It's only the Rabbanim that, that said this marriage is, is, is not ideal. So why is there no Knas? So answers the Gemara, we're learning Rompshat, what Ashniyas means. Ella, Arayas means, Chayove Mises, Bezden Ashniyas means Chayove Krisus. Charayas means somebody who, if you had relations with that person, there would be a Misa Bezden, right? Or Shnias means somebody like your sister, means that if you have relations with that person, you chayev Karis. It's also the Raisa. That's what the Raisa means. Only those two situations, there is no Knas because you can't even give them Kedushan. You can't even, you know, marry them. Avol chayov lavin. But let's say it's somebody that's a chayve lav. Let's say it's an almana to a coin gadol or something like that, a grusha to a, or, or a mitzri, where the Torah or, or something like that. So, um, uh, so, so if if it's only a chai ve'lav, yeshlan knas, then there would be knas. Why? Because you could potentially marry them, although they'll force you to give a divorce. But if you did marry them, kedushin would take effect. Umani, who's the Bryce, the author of the Bryce, Shimon Hatimni. Shimon Hatimni held that a chayve lavin, if it's a chayve lav, you still you have to pay the fine. Ike de Amri, others learn the Bryce differently. Arayas means chayove misus bezden, chayove krisus. Both of these cases are called, come under the umbrella of Arayas. Shnias, when the Bryce says Shnias has no knas, Chayove Lavin, even a Chayve Lav has no uh, has no Knas. If it's somebody, let's say, again, let's give the example, a Mayavit. To marry a Mayavit, to marry, and oh, no, I'm sorry, to marry, let's say, uh, a Grusha to a Kain Gardel, or an, something like that, or oh, Mamzeris. Mamzeris is a perfect example. A person's not allowed to marry a Mamzeris, but the Kedusha would take effect. The Bryce has said, still, since the Torah gave you a prohibition for marrying that woman, there is no Knas. Money, who's the author of this price, Rabbi Shimon ben Manasseh, who holds that the only time you'll pay a fine is only if it's a type of girl that you could potentially have a, a marriage that with no problems that you can keep her forever. Then the Bryce said, Hamama Enes, ain't lo knas If a cotton, Hamama Enes probably means a cotton, right? She's 10 years old. Her mother and brother married her off when she's seven. You know, and the reason why we spoke about the reason why they gave the right, the Brabant gave a right for a mother and brother to marry this girl off, so she shouldn't roam the streets and become a Zaina. So, but she she has the right to say, I don't like this guy and walk out of the marriage. So she absolved the marriage, but she was married. So we assume that she's not a Basula anymore. Ain't So what does this imply? This type of cotton that did the absolvement of the marriage. Uh, uh, has no knas. Hal katana ba'alma isla. But a regular katana would have knas. Money, who does this rice ago? Like Rabban and he, the army that said, katana yeshla knas. That there is knas if you rape and, and seduce a minor. There is a knas for that. That's the shita of Rabbana. But so that's probably the author of the brisa, Rabbana. But let's look at the end of the brisa, Ema Sefer. The end of the brisa says, Islandess aim lo knas lo pitoy, and Islandess a, a girl that always remains a cotton, and Jen, you know, doesn't show signs of any maturity. There is no knas. Why? Because she's always a cotton, and a cotton has no knas. According to the end of the brayse, it seems to say that a cotton has a katana has no knas. She has to be a nara in order to be a. Uh, knas has to be from twelve to twelve and a half years old. So the end of the brayse comes out. Asal Ramea comes according to Ramea. The Amal who said, Katana ain't law knas. The Katana has no knas. Baha, this girl who's a, a, a islandess, Mikat Nusa It's a it's an immature woman. She only leaves a minor, uh, from being a minor, she goes to adulthood when she turns 20. But she never had that position, p- period of time when she's like a, the start of a teenager. So, that means Raisha Rabbanam, the Sefer Mayor. Would you say that the beginning of the Brisa is Rabbanam, and that says that a katana has knas, and the end of the Brisa goes according to Rameir that says a katana does not have knas? It's not possible. You have two authors of the Brisa. 
Vichitema, would you want to say Ketakula Ramei? The whole Brisa goes according to Ramea. So that Ketana has no Knas. So the only problem is the beginning of the Brisa that says only a Mameenis, if a girl absolves the marriage, only that type of Katan has no Knas. Because we are under the assumption when does a girl who is married by her brothers and sisters absolves the marriage? Only when she's a Katana. That's not true. Not everybody holds that. She could also absolve the marriage even if she turned into a Nara. Even if she passed 12 years old, she could turn into a Nara. And what we're saying is, if this Nara absolved her marriage at 12 years old, she has no Knaz, but another Nara would have Knaz. And who is the opinion that holds a Mameenis could absolve a marriage after she turns 12 years old? Savalak Rabbi Huda. This 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 Rameir will hold like Rabbi Yehuda that e, a Mameenis could be even a twelve year old girl could absolve a marriage uh, that she was married mid Rabbanam by her brother her mother and brother. Um, gemaro, um, Does Rameir hold like Rabbi Yehuda? But Tanya we learned in a brisa ad Mosai habas Mameenis. How old can Abbas uh, absolve a marriage? So the brisa says Rameir's opinion is up until she brings two years until twelve years old, basically. Rabbi Yehuda, Aymer, Rabbi Yehuda says no, she could be even older than that. Until she has a, a, a lot more black hair than white hair. But the bottom line is, we see Rameir holds up until twelve. You could be a mamanis. Mamanis is only when she's a katana. So how could Abraisa be Rameir and Rameir will not hold that a Mamanis cannot be a Nara. Mamanis can only be a Katana. Ella says the Gemara, Rabbi Yehudi, the Braisa goes according to Rabbi Yehuda, Uve Katana, Sovelok Rameya. And Rabbi Yehuda happens to hold when it comes to a Katana, can a, do you have Knas by a Katana? Rabbi Huda will hold, there is no knas by a katana, because Rabbi Huda will hold like Rabbi Meir. So the Bryce is Rabbi Huda, and in the fact of whether a katana has knas or not, that's how Rabbi Huda will hold like Rabbi Meir. So the author of the Bryce would read Rabbi Huda. So the Gemara says, Umi Savala, who does Rabbi Huda hold of that opinion that a katana has knas? Well, Amar Rabbi Huda, Amar Rav, Rabbi Huda, Amar Rav says that a katana does not have knas, Zu Divere Meir. Only Rameir holds a katana, does not have knas. So then Isa, if Rabbi Huda agrees to Rameir, Zu Divi Rameir, Rabbi Huda Mibayle, it should say, these are the words of Rameir and Rabbi Huda. Both agree that a katana does not have knas. So it must be that, that, that Rabbi Huda is not the author. Rameir is this one rogue opinion that holds a katana does not have knas. So answers yeah. Gemara, Haitana Savala, the Brisa, the, the author of the Brisa holds like this, Kira Meir Bechada. He holds like Rameir that a katana does not have knas. It only applies to a 12 year old girl. But he argues with, with Rameir regarding islandists that Rameir held that you could only, uh, an island, uh, I'm sorry, a Mameenis could only absolve her marriage up until she's 12 years old. The author of our Brisa holds that she can absolve her marriage even after 12 years old. Okay, so that is the bottom line. The author of our Brisa must hold, and this is the bottom line, must hold like Rameir, that although the, the Torah says that you rapist and, and, and seduc, uh, someone who seduces a girl pays 50 shkolem, it only applies to a girl that's 12 to 12 and a half. That's the author, that has to be the opinion of our Brisa. But you should know the majority of the opinion held that it applies also by a minor. Raphram, Amar Raphram says that even to explain the Brisa, my Mimeenis, what does it mean when the Brisa says Mimeenis? It means, it doesn't mean uh, that she actually did Miun. It means, that means somebody who is a Katana, who had she been married, she could have been absolved of marriage. That is a girl that has no Knasapiti. So the Brisa is just continuing along the theme that a Katana has no uh, is not involved in the parsha of Knas. So the Gemara says, we're listening to Katana, just say straight up the word Katana. Uh, it has no Knas. Why do you have to pick, go along with a Dre that it's a Mameenis? If she would have been a girl who's married to somebody, she could do Mameenis, just say Katana has no Knas. Kashi, that's difficult. Okay, we continue with the Gemara. Islandess, again, we saw this Islandess is this immature woman, girl. She never, Noyelenu showed, um, uh, she showed maturity to becoming a teenager. 
There's no knas v'loy pitu. There's no knas. Why? Again, because she's always a katan. And therefore, she has, according to our mayor, there's no knas by a katan, by a katana. So the Gemara asks, Uraminu, let me ask you a, a contradiction. Abraisa says, Hacharesus Vashoita, a low functioning woman, Voa Ailinus, and an Ailinus, an immature woman, Yeshlan Knas, Yeshlan Tainus Besulim. So there is Knas by an Ailinus. So why does our Brysa says there is no Knas, and this Brysa says there is Knas? So Gemara says, Voha Mai Rumya. What kind of contradiction is that? Hora Meir. Our Brysa, the first Brysa goes according to Ramea that there is no Knas by a Katana, and that's why Ailinus has no Knas. Ha, Rabbonim, but the second price that it says Islandus has Knaz goes according to the Rabbonim. And Rabbonim hold that by a katana there is Knaz. So that's, you can resolve it very easily. And that's what leads the Gemara to the next question. Uda Ka'arele, the one that asked this question, Mike Ka'arele, what's, why do you ask such a simple question where I can answer you, Hara Meir, Hara Bonham? Answers the Gemara, no. That's not was that was not his uh, uh, major question. His question was Isle He could ask. He wanted to ask another question. This was a lead up to another question. The Bryce has said before an imbecile, right? A chereshes and a shaita, and a, a woman, a girl who's very low functioning girl. There is knas. And there's tainus pesul. What does tainus pesul mean? That if a, if a, a man marries a low functioning woman. He could say the next morning, say, hey, she's not a virgin. I don't have to pay the full ksuba. Uh, and we believe him. We believe him. Then this price says, There is no tainus pasulam. In other words, he can't, uh, he can't, a guy who married a low functioning lady cannot say, oh, this whole marriage is a mistake because I didn't find uh, a virgin blood uh, from her. Um, so the, it's, there's no tiny specific because by marrying a low functioning woman, we are assuming that she is has no basula. She has no uh, blood. Why? Because she must have had an accident when she was uh, uh, younger and, and she lost the dam basula and they didn't know what it was. So therefore, you can't tina that you married her because you're thinking she's a basula. That's not true. You, when you marry her, you you knew she's not a basula. So again, we have a steer between this brisa right over here and this brisa. Here it says that you could absolve the marriage by saying the whole thing was a mistake if you don't find if you don't find basulim. And here it says You can't you can't make that claim. Answers the and then we just finished this price. Asuma by islandess, yes, lam times basulum. A blind girl and an islandess, you have you have a right to claim that uh, that the, you, you you that the, there's tiny basulum. If you don't find that she's a basula, you can absolve the marriage. Sumcha Simon Mishum Rabmeyer, Sumcha says in the name of Ramea, Suma Ainla Tanis Basulum. You marrying a blind girl, you don't either have Tanis Basulum. But the point of the Brisa is we have a contradiction between Kharesh Shaita to Kharesh Shaita. Answers the Gemara Omar of Sheshit Loikash, it's not difficult. Har Rabbi Gamliel, Har Rabbi Shua. When uh, Rabbi Shua says, when you, you have Tainus Basulim, you can tie a Basulim and absolve the marriage. And we don't believe her. Rabbi Gamliel says that when a, when, you, when a person says, oh, I don't find Basulim, we would ask the lady, how come there's no Basulim? And she says, you're right, I was raped, but I was raped. I, I, I had relations, but I was raped after I was married, and therefore it's his loss. Uh, so Rabbi Gabriel says we would believe her, and she and and it's too bad on him. That's his problem. He didn't. That it's unfortunate that he got a mazel. It's his mazel that caused her to get uh, raped. She, she's tiny, Misha Rastani Nanasti, and a normal girl who tiny is Misha Rastani Nanasti. When I got engaged, that's when I got. Nanas, I was somebody was my honest me, and that's why I don't have Dam Basulam. We believe her, and she she can keep the marriage and have the ksuba. So the Gemara says, but that's Ema de Shamat Le Ram Gamliel. When did Rabbi Gamliel say you believe the lady? Hecha the Katana Ini. If she says something about that, if she asks her, Where's the Basulam? And she says that after I got engaged, that's when I got Nanas. But Hecha the Katana Inu, but these low functioning girls, me Shamat Le, are they, uh, 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 if they're not, if they're not. Uh, claiming anything, we did Rabbi Gamliel say that we would believe them. Um, there is nothing to believe uh, because they're not saying anything. 
And says the Gemara, and yes, Kaven the Omar Rav Gamliel Mehemna. Since Rabbi Gamliel said, by a normal girl, we would believe Kaganzu if they're low functioning girl, we make the claim on their behalf. Sach we open the mouth to somebody who can't speak. That's what a pasuk in Mishlei. So basically, when this low function, when this husband says to the low functioning girl, I, I there's no basulim over here. The bezdin will not tell him, oh, your your marriage is a mistake and you can walk away. They'll, they'll tell him, no, you still have to pay the ksuba. Why? Because we're going to claim on her behalf, because she can't talk, that yes, there is no basulim, we believe you. But when she got engaged, somebody uh, raped her. And therefore, that's why there's no dam basulim. And so it's your loss over here. And therefore, um, in that case, we say, Charesha uh, shoyte ain't lehem taivus basulim. Then the Gemara says, if you marry a, an adult girl, all girls that we marry today are, are by Geras, right? No one, no one marries a 12-year-old. It, then there's no such a thing of Tainus Basulam. That means if you don't find Dam, you can't go and walk out of the marriage. Say, says the Gemara, is that true? Bahama Rav, Rav says, Bigeris, if you marry a Bigeris, an adult girl, Noisten Law Leila Risha. We gave her the first night. Any dam that's on the first night is not called Dam Nida, where she would have to, uh, in Minatora speaking, that means she would have to separate. She's Tame. That's a different type of blood. That's the hymen ripping. And therefore, there's no, there's, we give her that first night as a free pass, that any dam that she would see will not answer her on her husband, technically speaking. But what you do see is that every Baigeris does have dam besulim. So how is this Baigeris, how does the Bryce say, Baigeris ain't lehem tanis besulim? We go to Amit Beis, and for the Gemara, tan tanis damim, if we, if, or Amlamit Vav if he's saying that I didn't find blood, then, then, then it's a good it's a good claim because when you're marrying an adult girl, you expect to have basulim blood. and here is the talking about he doesn't he, there was no blood. And he didn't check if somehow he's not sure if there was blood or not blood, but if he's tining the Katoyan Tanas Pesa Basua, he says the opening was uh, uh, of the vagina was was more wider than I expected. And therefore, maybe she had relations with somebody prior to me. And therefore, uh, that's why he's saying that the, maybe uh, that uh, she she was Mazana uh, after he got engaged to her. So we say we don't believe him. Why? Because only on a Nara or Katana, where they're young, then you can say that and the opening is narrow. Here, when you get to an adult, the opening widens. So you think that somebody slept, she had relations before you, but it really is not that case. So therefore, we don't we don't accept that kind of a claim. Ah. Sumchis Ayman Mishum Rameya. Sumchis said in the name of Rameya that what Suma, if you marry a blind girl, ain't Latinus Basulim. You can't claim that you don't find uh, uh, Basulim blood. So why not? You're marrying this fine girl and uh, from a fine home. She's blind, but you can expect that she's a Basula. My time at the Sumchis. Why does why does Sumchis say you can't? There's no there's no claim against her if you don't find Dam Sulam. Answers the Gemara. Amr Abzera Nishe Chavetes Al Gabe Kaka. She bangs herself on the ground, and therefore she probably lost her Dam Basulam without realizing it. Frag the Gemara. Kula Nami Chabute Michapti. Every girl trips and falls one time in her life. Answers the Gemara. Kulu every girl royas. Umaris Liman. If she would see blood, she would show her mother, and her mother say, oh, "You lost your dam basulim." So you'll know for beforehand if she's a basula, and she should make that clear to her new husband that she lost her blood. Uh, but Zu, this girl, ain't a roya, ain't a She doesn't see blood, and she, therefore she never showed her mother that she lost her blood. So she might not be a basula and not even know about it. And therefore, there's no tainus basulim against her. Not you can't hold it against her if you don't have a basula. Now the Brisa says, the Brisa says, in the original Brisa that we learned, if, he, if a man was married to a lady, and then he, and Adam said that she was Mizana, as an Aishas Ish, so then there's no Knas, there's no, if, if she was raped by somebody, then there's no Knas. The whole thing doesn't make sense, says the Gemara. If she's getting divorced because of a bad name, that means somebody said that she was Mizana while she's married, 
Baskilahi, she's on, she's going to death row. She's an Aishas Ish being Mizana. Forget about Knas, and she's not even a Basula, but she, uh, of course not. She's she's on death row. Amar of Sheishis, no. What we're talking about over here is Hachikama, fascinating thing. Mi Shiyotza Leo Shemra, a girl, she, in her high school year, uh, she, uh, uh, she, it came out a bad name about her that she's sleeping around, Bialdusa. So if if the rumors are flying in her school, let's say that she's uh, sleeping around, ain't lo lo knas lo pitu. If somebody is mizana with her or ha, uh, was ma'anis her or mafata her, there's no knas. So that that's a little strange because just on a rumor, she loses out because Amar Papa Ra Papa said Shmaminov from here. If we're gonna take that literally, we can assume high star araya loy magbinale. If there's a rumor about a, a about a document. That's if somebody owes money based on a document. If there's rumor about that document that it's forged, we don't use it to collect. So the Gemara says like this: Hey, Chedami, That means a rumor came out that this document is forged. So that means the Kvasa Hacha over here is the same idea. The Nafek Allah Kala does not that a, a, a rumor came out that she's a Zaina. That's basically what we're saying. We believe all rumors. So the Gemara says that's not true. Well, Rava, Rava said we don't believe rumors. If, if a girl, she's a Bas Kohanis, right? Her father's a Kohen. And everybody said she slept around. Maybe she slept with a Goy, but here in the city. If it's just a rumor, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, we don't concern about it. And we let her eat, continue to eat Shruma. So we see we don't, give validity to rumors over here. So what's Pshat in the Mishnah, what's Pshat in the Brisa that says that if a uh, is Mishum Shemra, if if she's divorced, if she if she if a, if a bad name comes out about her, she doesn't have knas. What does that mean? Ella, it means like this. The also betrayed, two witnesses came and said about this girl, let's say she's 12 years old. They said, Omri, she said, Lididi to Vasani Bisura. She she made a proposition for us to do znos with her. And we refused, right? But but just like she propositioned us, she probably propositioned other people, so she's not a basula. So there's witnesses saying that she's propositioning people. And therefore, she has no knas and piti. And the same thing, the kavosi hocha, you'll say the same thing by a document. The also betray, if two people come, the Amri, then they say, lidid he, I'm really Zaifli, that the guy who owns the document said, I uh, to us, he said that this is a forged document. He winked to us. So then we, we say this document is forged and because he said it in front of Adam. So the Gemara says like this, because he, he actually said, he came over to two people and said, please sign on this document and help me do this forgery. And the two people are saying that we're not helping you do the forgery. So therefore, even if a document came out from this guy, we wouldn't trust him. So the Gemara says like this, Bishla Mahasam, by the case of the propositioning girl, there must be other people. If she wasn't successful with the two people, she was successful with other people to be Mizana. And that's why I would I would give credence to that kind of rumor that she's sleeping around. Elahacha over here, a guy who wants to make a document. If he got, if he went over to two Jews and says, please sign your fake names on the document, and they refuse, they, who says he was able to successfully get other people to do that? There's no Yetzirah for that. If he wants to do such a thing, every Jew is 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 presumed to do such a thing to forge to forge a document. And so the Gemara, Achinami, we do believe it. Kivan the Komahade as the since we see that he's looking to forge a document, we, the guy who's trying to do that, if he wasn't successful of finding somebody to, to write signatures, he'll figure out how to write the fake signatures and make up his own document. So if we see a person is in the in the in the counterfeiting of documents, even if we don't know for sure if he was able to get people to, to count to make a counterfeit signature, but since we see he's uh, approaching people, so then we assume that he, if, even if he didn't find anybody to do it, he he probably did it himself. New Mishnah. The Elu Shein Lehem Knas. The following ladies, there's no Knas. 
This we saw that if you if you have Mazana with a girl that became, let's say, a Gioris after three years old, right? Let's say she became a Gioris at five years old, or somebody who was in captivity, right? A girl who was in captivity, all these situations, since we assume that Goyim sleep around, we assume that there's no Dambasulam over here. Because uh, because she probably, as a goy, being after three years old, she may have slept with somebody. So she's not a basula. And therefore, there is no knas by such a type of girl. Rabbi Yehuda, I met, Rabbi Yehuda says, Shavuya, a girl that was in captivity, Shinivdas that got redeemed, we assume that nobody touched her. Unbelievable. Even though she she's a, even even if she's an adult girl, we don't sure assume that she was mazana with with the with her captors and probably her ksuba would be messiah and she could eat um truma stuff like that because just because she's in captivity by goyim doesn't mean they slept with her now the mishnah says haba bitoy someone who is mazana with his daughter abbas bitoy or his granddaughter abbas benoy or his granddaughter from his son's side abbas ishtoy the daughter of his wife abbas benoy the daughter of her son, Abbas Bita, the daughter of her daughter, obviously it's from a different marriage, Ain Lohan Knas. Why? Because when you mazana with these people, uh, when you have relations with these people, you're dealing with the death penalty. And he has the death penalty. Because their Misa is Bey Bezden. Even though you weren't warned, still you're dealing, you're involved in a case that potentially could have led to your death. Whenever you are required to die, all money obligations are dropped. There's no, you don't pay money. So we have a pasuk that says that as long as there's no, if you didn't get, if you're not subject to the death penalty, then you pay money. But if you are subject to the death penalty, then you don't pay money. So one more piece of Gemara. Amma Rabbi Yechiden, Rabbi Yechiden said, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Doisi. Um, Daisa, um, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Daisa both say one idea. What's that one idea? Uh, that that just because a girl ends up in uh, you know captivity doesn't mean she's sleeping with her captors. Rabbi Yehuda had Rabbi Yehuda is very clear that opinion in our Mishnah. Rabbi Daisa, Rabbi Daisa says that uh, he, he. Where do we see Rabbi Daisa's same opinion? The Tanya we learned in the Brisa. Shvuya echelus betruma did Rabbi Daisa. If someone was in captivity. She can come back and eat truma. And we don't assume that she slept with the goy who, who were her captors, and now she's not permitted to eat truma. No, she is permitted to re- eat truma. Divrei Rabdaisa. And Amr Rabdaisa, Rabdaisa just like, uh, you know, strengthens his opinion. He says, Chima also la Arabi halaz. What did this Arab who took her into captivity did? Now, Arabs generally are more promiscuous. And 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 even an Arab wouldn't sleep with the with the, with the girl that he has in captivity. Because he squeezed her breast, Solomon Akuna, she passes her from Kuna. Maybe he played around with her, but he didn't actually uh, penetrate her and go in. And therefore, and therefore, she's not. She's considered to be tahar. And when she gets out of captivity, she can eat, continue eating truma. So we see Reb Daisa and Reb Yehuda both uh, 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 congruent with the same opinion. That uh, that the Shavuya doesn't necessarily sleep with her captors. So the Gemara just challenges that. Omar Rabba, Rabba said, Demolohi, maybe it's not so. Maybe they don't hold the same opinion. Maybe Rabbi Yehuda holds that really we assume that she slept with her captors. But why did Rabbi Yehuda say if that's the case, then the next guy that that rapes her has to pay? He's not raping a basula. Because at Khan like Rabbi Huda Hacha Rabbi Huda didn't say that over here that you uh, uh, that the person who is Mizana, who's Ma'anis Ashbuya would have to pay because Elish Like uh, like Sheldon pointed out earlier, we don't want somebody who does an Avera, sleeps with a girl, to walk away and not have to pay. So therefore, Rabbi Huda, you know, really in his heart believes that she actually slept with uh, with her captors. But we're going to keep her like, uh, assume that she's a basula, and so that the guy who was mazana with her, ma'anas to her, after she got released from captivity, we, we don't want him to walk away without paying uh, uh, a fine. Aval Hasam, but over there, when she was to go eat truma, maybe Karabanan's Svirulay, maybe they, he holds like the Rabbanan, that she's also to eat truma. Once she was in captivity, she can't go back to eat truma. Inam, you can say the reverse 
case. Only there said, only he, she only permitted Truma de Rabana. Really, Radaisa believes that she actually slept with some with her captors. But he only permitted her when she's released from captivity to eat Truma de Rabana. So it's not awesome and right, it's not really Truma de Raisa. He gave permission. Ava Knas, Daraisa, when you're trying to pull Knas out of somebody and saying that the second guy who's honest with her, with this Shvuya, would have to pay. That's taking money from somebody. Maybe Karabonim severely, maybe he will hold like the Rabbanon who will hold that Ashvuya does not have Kanas because you know, because we assume that she's not a Basula. And then Gemara says like this, and this will end. Amale Abaya. Abaya said like this. So what are you saying over here? It, it, can you say that Rabbi Huda's opinion is that we assume Ashvuya had slept with her captives. And the only reason why Rabbi Yehuda is saying that somebody that's Ma'anas her would have to pay is so that, the, so that he shouldn't do an Avera with her and, and walk away without paying. The time of Rabbi Yehuda, is, if, would you say that Rabbi Yehuda will hold that the, his opinion is that we don't want somebody who doesn't Avera to, to, to profit from it without paying the price? Well, Tanya, we learned in Abraisa, Rabbi Yehuda, Aymer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Shvuya, Somebody was in captivity, Shani's base, and then she got released. She's totally pure. And therefore, even if she's 10 years old, right? Her kusuba will be a 200. In other words, we assume that she's a basula. She's an actual basula when she gets married. And there is, there's no chayta over here. A guy who's actually marrying her, you're forcing him, the, the guy who's marrying her, to pay a, a 200 ksuba as if he's marrying a basula. It must be that Rabbi Yehuda really feels that when somebody's in captivity, does not at all sleep with the, uh, with, the, with the captors. What is that, the, what Avera is being done that we don't want to be profit profitable over here? And says the Gemara, no. Maybe Rabbi Yehuda still holds in his heart's heart, that somebody never got into a captivity situation, the girl is not a basula anymore. So then why, when she's released and gets married, why is the why did the Chazal force that the Ksuba should be a 200 as if she's a basula? If you, if you, if, if you, if you said that, oh, that she has a less of a Ksuba, nobody's going to want to marry her. So, because they're going to say, why, why, why should I take this kind of Ba'ula who slept with Goyim and was in captivity and she probably has mental issues? Let me look for somebody else. So, what, the, what they did was and said to her, said, said about this girl, that this girl who's in captivity, whoever is going to marry her, should view her as if she's a Basula and she has to pay Ksubasa Messiah. But it's not really, not really uh, believed that she still remain uh, Kedusha Dek. But okay, so this is where we're up to this machlekes of of a girl who's in captivity. Does she remain kedusha dik or not? Where did she be off? They sove Rabbi Yehuda kedusha sakaima. So that's three lines from where the okay. lines get uh, narrow. Okay, got it. Yes. Thank you. All right. Very good. Good Shabbos, everybody. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. I got the yamtiv also. It's two ba'av, so it's a big guy. Very good. Shukhem and mazel for everybody. Amen. Amen.